The verdicts were a foregone conclusion, guilty on all charges. Foreign observers were invited to watch the trial. British diplomat Fitzroy Maclean witnessed the last act of a charade. When they were all being condemned to death at the end, um, they were filming it and uh, the floodlights were on the dock. And um, the man who was operating the lights let them for a minute get out of control. And I, I, th this is in this very big former ballroom. And right up in the ceiling somewhere was a little window with black smoked glass. and. The light shone directly for a minute on that, and we all looked round, and there, sure enough, was Stalin at two or three in the morning at the last night of uh, the, the proceedings, uh, watching all his former colleagues being condemned to death, which is one of the most nightmarish sights I've ever seen. strength and achievement through toil. These were the virtues the Soviets loved to proclaim in the 1930s. Stalin lived by them. The great terror had made him strong. He ruled supreme and unchallenged. Though it had cost millions of lives, this was his achievement. The year of the Bukharin trial, 1938, is usually seen as the end of the purges. It wasn't really. It was just that the system had stabilized. The prisons and camps no longer needed filling up, just topping up. This is a new Soviet history book for schools. It says that by preliminary estimates, about 40 million people were repressed under Stalin. By my calculations, about half of these were executed or starved or were killed in labor camps. The Soviets used to criticize me for exaggerating. Now they're criticizing me for underestimating. Young communist Ella Schister loved Stalin. Her husband, Raphael Greenberg, had different views. Greenberg said to us over lunch one day, you're all such kind-hearted fools, you don't understand what's going on. I'm telling you that Zinoviev, Kamenev, Bukharin, Rykov, Tomsky, Stalin will shoot every one of them. And you'll be brought round to the idea so gently that you'll end up voting for it. I couldn't stand such slander against Stalin. He was the second Lenin to me, so I threw a knife at Greenberg. Luckily, it missed. He was a clever man, so clever, much cleverer than me. But at the time, I said to him, you've made it all up because you're against him. It's all just slander against Stalin. That's how much we believed in Stalin. After that, I knew we could no longer live together. Our relationship was so strained, it was awful. Stalin had come between us. And even though we had a close and loving family, even though we had two children, I knew that we had to part. Greenberg was shot. Ella's second husband loved Stalin as much as she did. He was shot too. <laughs> 